Subset of the Great Commission.
mighty on your throne. Hey, 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 mighty on your throne. You are 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 mighty. You are mighty. You are going to confess it to your life like this. You are mighty. You are mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty. You are mighty in my life. Mighty in my life. Oh, oh, oh. Glory to the Lamb. You are the mighty God, and you are so good. You are the good day, I like that. Hey, oh, you are the mighty God, all our wise. We give you praise tonight, oh God. I like my no one like you, no one like you, it's your vice and say, no one like you, no one like you, no one like you, you are the God of everything, you are not a man, you are not a man, you are the God who opens doors, no man can shut, you are not a man, you are not a man, you are the God of everything, thank you Father. We bless you. We bless you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We We thank you, Father. 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 We thank you, and we declare no one like him. Sing no one like you. You No one like you say. You are seated. Oh, you are seated on your throne. You are highly lifted up. You are highly lifted up. You are highly lifted up. Yahweh. You are highly lifted up. No, 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 with the name above all names, you are highly lifted up. Yeah, can we just pray in the spirit? You are highly lifted up. And a machine that bread no me na ni na ma. Zele li na mi na ma na ma na ma na ni. Da ba di da ba ba de bi na na ma jama na ma ni a. Rebeli na ma na mreska me na ma. Ye na le nu nu na ne ya na ni na ni na mi na kola ma na ma ni a ni a na. Oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord God Almighty. Blessed is he who comes in the 
the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord God Almighty. Oh, Jesus. Hey, we shall the winner. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hey, we shall the winner. A winner. A winner. Alabaria da Bandia Talabandra Tabadis. Hey, I serve a winner. Hey, thank you, Father. Awesome. You are praises, Yahweh. Yahweh, this worship is for you. Yahweh, receive the lifting of my holy hand. It's unto you, it's unto you, Yahweh, you are praised. You are Yahweh, Yahweh, this worship, this worship is for you, Yahweh, receive, and the lifting of my holy hands, it's unto you. Thank you, Father. Hey, Elohim Madonna. Hey, Allah da Baria da Bar. Oh, Elohim my defender. Ah, Elohim, Elohim our strength now. Oh, 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 oh. Elohim my provider. Our Father, Kadaba Shatana Badaba, Elohim, our Maker, Elohim, Madonna, our eyes are open by the power of the Holy Ghost, our eyes are open and we can see. Our eyes are open, our eyes are open by the power of the Holy Ghost. We can see. Can you declare where you are? See, my eyes are open, my ears are open by the power of the Holy Ghost. I can see. Say my eyes are open tonight to see visions, to hear his voice, understand his instructions of the Holy Ghost. I can see. We can see, Father. Thank you. The reality of redemption, the ministry of the Spirit. Once again, Father, change our lives. Let your name be glorified. Be lifted up, be lifted up, <laughs> oh Lord, be lifted up, for you are holy, righteous and worthy, oh Lord, be lifted up, be lifted up. Thank you, Jesus. As we worship you, God, you are holy, you are holy, righteous and worthy, oh God. Oh God, we believe that. Oh, we believe that. Ozeni alefi shaka were o e etobi oluwa oluwa etobi e oluwa etobi who is excited tonight oluwa oluwa etobi 
One more song that we're done. You are good and your mercy is forever. Somebody needs to thank God there tonight. Just give him praise. My God. You are great and your glory is forever. Night is awesome. Holy Ghost, you are brooding. Shana na na me ni na mo shama na ni ono na mo shama. Hey, one more time. Over your life and family, concerning your vision, every darkness goes in light. Listen, we will not be small. We will not be few. The scripture says, fear not little flock. It is the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom and to make you great. Thank you, Father, for your grace tonight. 
Thank you for your awesome presence even here amidst your people. Thank you because God in the midst of his people is mighty. We ask for revelation once again. Let us be inspired. And let understanding come in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Somebody glory. say glory. glory. Oh my, somebody say glory. glory. Hallelujah. You know, it is always better to give God thanks. Uh, it is a good thing, scripture says, to give thanks. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Such a joy to have you. Such a joy to have you here tonight. Um, welcome to part nine of our algorithm of vision. Can somebody just celebrate Jesus? It's It's been such... It's such a wonderful time. Oh, Mitchell, our friends, God bless you. I see you're online with us. God bless you. Mary and Co., God bless you. Good to have you online. My friends on Facebook, uh, God bless you. Brother Michael, Brother Hosseini, Sister Christiana, uh, Brother Samuel, God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining tonight. We trust God for much grace and speed. You see, one of the beautiful things about the kingdom of God is that when it comes to God's principles, you can understand what they are. You can know which principle applies to what, and then when you apply it faithfully, you will necessarily see the results those who have seen results are seen in their lives. So that means that there is no haziness. There is no... The, the principles of the kingdom are not half a sad. It's not you get one here correct today and then the other different tomorrow. It doesn't, it doesn't change with seasons. The instructions of God are as ancient as the ancient one himself. So you, you and I must understand that when it comes to walking the king, principles of the kingdom, Jesus told us, he said, unto you it is given to understand, to comprehend, to lambano, the principles the mysteries of the kingdom the reason why it is a mystery it is not is not because it's the, it is not known it is a mystery not because it is not known there are some things that are actually known but they are not understood it's a mystery because it looks simple but yet the the gravity the potency of it is what is responsible for the transformation that you see and you see because our operation is a supernatural one we must always be grateful to god for the fact that we have his word the, the word of god is better than any junk you can have around the word of god is our foundation for doctrine is our foundation for living first peter chapter 2 and verse 2 he says as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby so our growth and transformation is dependent upon our comprehension of the systems of the kingdom as it relates to what god has showed us about himself about his will about his nature about his character in his word. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3 says, According as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, all right, through the knowledge of him who has called us into glory and virtue. So we see that the ministry of the word of God is the greatest thing that we can receive in our lives at any season whatsoever. Whether you are in prosperity or you are in poverty, you are in the middle of the road or you are in the back end of the corner, I want you to know that when the word of God comes to you, it is his answer to you. When the word of God comes to you, he lifts you from where you are to where you ought to be. So who is excited for the word? If you're excited for the word, can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Oh, Fumi, God bless you, Sister Fumi. Good to have you online, Brother Kenny. God bless you. Our winner of the two times giveaway celebrate you sir god bless you please let's as usual as our custom is let's share the video with as many friends i want to see us share tonight once again please share with friends on facebook on your other social media platforms i know some of you have done that that already but those who have not please share the live broadcast with as many friends what i want to teach tonight is very powerful and so we've been discussing a lot on vision your life is driven by what you are convicted by your life is driven by your convictions your life is driven by your understanding your spiritual understanding charts the course of your life when you come to know what god wants for you on a particular matter inferiority complex will die fear will die discouragement will die hope will come alive again on your inside tonight because of my time we're going straight to another law laws of vision we've been we've defined vision we've defined dynamics of vision discussed a lot extensively understanding your vision casting the vision communicating the vision leadership relationship priorities all right um character right yes. uh 
what was last week's session? Personal leadership. So today, um, this is part nine. We are going to part ten. Tomorrow, it will just be about an hour, an hour, 30 minutes. More of prayers and activations, just prophesying. But I'll bring a little teaching tomorrow and then we cap it up. Okay, so tonight, please bring out your notebooks. The law of resilience. The law of resilience. When you have discovered vision, when you have come to have at least a good grasp, all right, of where you perceive that the Lord wants to send you or what your role is in the Great Commission, because we said that your vision must be a subset of the Great Commission. Your vision must find a place in advancing the purposes of the kingdom. We said that your vision is not about you. You don't design it by yourself. You can make plans, all right, but your plans must be in alignment with the vision of God that you have discovered for your life. And I explained how to discover vision so tonight we want to look at the law of resilience if you do not understand this law no matter what you have discovered you will not be able to make a headway and this is why i want to teach on this very very crucial romans chapter number eight i read um, a few verses there romans chapter number eight just for the sake of my emphasis tonight i'll just touch on two verses and then we'll check other scriptures. Now let's look at Romans chapter 8 from verse 36. Romans chapter 8 from verse 36. I just want to bring a, a point there as regards resilience. Okay. Romans chapter 8 verse 36. As it is written. For thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Nay, irrespective of all these things, whether it is tribulation, distress, persecution, whatever it is, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword, it says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors conquer us through him that loved us that word nay in all these things is 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 pointing to what we call the law of resilience that see resilience is actually a mentality a mentality that says even if i fall i rise again resilience is a perspective that rises even when it falls. Resilience simply means plasticity. All right? It means elasticity. All right? It means to be springy. It means you, 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 you cannot be broken. You, you cannot be shattered by circumstances and situations. You, you, are like, you are like the rubber ball in the ocean. No matter how low they put you, you rise back again. You are like the palm tree. The scripture calls the believers palm tree flourish as the palm tree and one of the characters of palm tree is that it is flexible when there is a mighty storm you see obeche tree or pepe tree mahogany the oaks all right and the iroko and the likes when there is a mighty storm most times they are uprooted all right and then they fall and some scatter houses some kill some all kinds of stuff but you 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 is hardly would you ever find palm trees that have been uprooted have you ever seen the palm tree uprooted by itself by the wind no why because the the, the design of the palm tree is that the more terrorist wind the more the adversity the more the challenges the stronger it becomes this is why the bible didn't say the righteous shall flourish as the oaks he said it shall flourish as the palm tree is somebody with me tonight? The law of resilience. Now, one of the first things I have to explain very quickly is this. Get out of victim mode. As, as I lay down to rest before coming to teach, it just came to my heart to say, get out of the victim mode. Many times in our lives, even in this season, this COVID season, you have discovered your purpose. You have an idea of the blueprint. You are clear as to your mission. You have even started setting goals. You have begun, you know, probably for some of us at different levels in our pursuit of vision, you are taking steps already, baby steps here and there. But something now happens to you that jolts you. I mean, it almost throws you off balance. And then you come to discover that um, is as though the vision you received was not from God. 
or is as though you didn't really hear God well. Listen, I taught you the other time that every time you receive something from God and it aligns with righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then as you begin to want to pursue it, Satan begins to give you alternative and he begins to tell you otherwise. Most times you should begin to rejoice because it is a sign that that thing is authentic. The enemy will not rise against anything that does not affect his kingdom negatively. So the one of the proofs that you're on the path of vision is that there will be adversity. Are we together, please? So get out of the victim mode when circumstances happen to us, when situations that are unpalatable come our way. One of there are three ways people react. Maybe I should just start with this. There are three ways people react to circumstances. Three reactions to circumstances. Number one, some react as victims. That means they already throw in the towel. They 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 shut themselves off the possibility. That nay, in all these things, our mindset is that we'll, there will still be a solution. So, because they have shut their minds of the possibility that they can rise and surmount that situation, they already become victims and they play the victim card. So, you hear them saying, ah, it's the government. You hear them saying ah, their life is this and that. And then they cannot think productively. They cannot pray effectively and they will never live where they are. They die as mediocres. The second reaction to circumstances, especially negative situations, is to play the persecutor or the critic. The victim is the one who sees everything as a disadvantage to him or her and will not rise above the situation. The persecutor or the, or the critic is the one who blames everybody for his or her failure. Is the one who blames everybody for the mishap that happens either in the economy, in the society, or in his or her personal life. So what they do is that they always look for somebody to blame. This is why when you read the book of Genesis, the Bible began to tell us about the story of the first man, Adam and Eve. And the Bible makes us to understand that when they sinned against God and God summoned the meeting, the Bible says that said to God that it was the woman that you gave me that advised me, all right, that made me to sin, to eat of the fruit of the tree. When God asked the woman, so what happened? The woman said it was the serpent that deceived me. And then there was a curse Cause at the way because man failed to accept responsibility for wrong. Every time you choose to put blame, to play, to play the blame game by putting blame on other people, you are actually setting yourself up for failure instead of success. So whatever happens to you, do not play the victim card. Don't say it's uh, the world is against you or that's why you can't know. Don't say you don't, there is no possibility to rise. Don't say there is no hope. Don't play the critic. Don't say uh, that's why this person is this and that person. And then begin to call names and begin to, you know, react in a way that throw tantrums all around the place. Throwing tantrums is not a sign of growth. Throwing tantrums is not a sign of good health. Throwing tantrums is not a sign of wisdom. Throwing tantrums is not a sign of maturity. You see, when the child begins to throw tantrums, you know, they, they rebuke the child and they begins to do any on the floor. After a while, they will tell him, when you are done, get up and go and wash the plate. Because what you actually don't want to do, when you have wasted time throwing tantrums, you will still need to go and do it again. So, number one, people respond by becoming victims. Number two, people respond by becoming persecutors and critics. Number three, people respond by taking full responsibility. You see that now? By admitting that, okay, this has happened, they take responsibility to become helpers. They take responsibility. They are not victims. They are not critics or persecutors. Rather, they are lifesavers. They are rescuers. They are saviors. Is somebody with me now? All right. So, Dietrich Boinhofer, one of, uh, is a great man of God over the years, many centuries ago. He said, action springs not from thought. You know, I explained the other day that from thought, all right, conviction. So he said, action springs not from thought, but from a readiness for responsibility. So what are the things that happen when, because when I want to understand, I want to do, I want to do a thematic analysis of resilience. I want us to understand it in the barest, all right, in the simplest form. I want to chop it down for us. Listen to this. Action spring not from thought, 
but from a readiness for responsibility. That means that your action is not going to come just because you thought about it. There are people who have vision. They thought it, they've thought about it. They've even written it down. Some have even printed it. Some have even shared it with other people. But sharing the vision with other people is still not taking action. That's 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 what I call that auxiliary. When Joseph received his dream, he told his brethren, is that too? As he fulfilled it then by shedding his brethren, not at all. They are just auxiliary systems to allow you know one or two other people become aware and see how you can collaborate. But that is still not taking action. Taking action is, is what we call execution. It is in this phase that a lot of things come against, which I'm going to be explaining in very practical terms. It is in this phase where you find out that okay, some friends, some friends are not really your friends. It's in that phase you find out some people who said they really believed in you. They wrote you motivational messages on your birthday. They posted your picture on their statuses and did all kinds of things like you are the most loved in the world. Then when you tell them your vision and then you're about executing and they're like, see, um, God will be with you. We are praying for you. You see, uh, well, even when we know it's just a diplomatic statement, most people will say they are praying for you are not really praying. Those who are really praying for you don't even tell you they are praying for you. You see that? So we want to understand this a readiness for responsibility. So your thoughts are not productive if they remain as thoughts. Many people are in the grave, they have mighty thoughts, but thought, intention does not bless anybody. It is action that guarantees a reaction. Are we together? Mm. Being the victim is comforting. Playing the persecutor is thrilling. But both of them are actually stupid. Now let's go to the law of resilience. Let's share some scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. You know, Paul the Apostle, <laughs> he was a resilient man. Is that true? There was a time the Apostle, he, he was left for dead. They put him in a basket. They flogged him. They let him down through a basket because they wanted to kill him. They even thought he had died. They left him. And then he stood up again with blood stain all over his body. Shattered and battered beyond recognition. If you were to snap passport photograph the other day, you won't recognize whether it was Saul of Tarsus, Tarsus again. Guess what? He stood again and went to the next city. Guess what he went to do? He didn't go and rest. Though. He kept preaching. You know what that means? Be so sold out to your vision that you are willing to die for it. M many people are not, cannot fulfill vision because they are not resilient. A little hiccup here. They say, ah, maybe God did not tell me. Then we cave in. You release the track. It didn't sell. No, no more than 20 people bought the track. You say, maybe God didn't call me to sing. No. I'm going to teach you how to how to function in resilience in a way that will be to your maximum advantage. Is somebody with me tonight? First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. If you are with me, say, I'm with you. If you are not with me, say, I'm not. If you are with me, say, I'm with you. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. You know, I know I'm talking to believers, okay? So this is not a business meeting where I won't call scripture. I'm just showing that. But it says, quit you like me. Quit you like me does not mean quit. Is it King James? Does anybody have Amplified? He's not saying quit, like leave what you are doing like men. That's not what he's saying. He's actually saying, accept responsibility. Is somebody with me? Be strong. <laughs> to be resilient is to be strong. And I'm going to explain. Second Chronicles 20. Oh, goodness. Then I begin to. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 17. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves in array. Now, okay, this was this was a battle at Z's. Alright. Now, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow. Now, God said, look at that scripture. Remember in Exodus chapter 3, verse 13, that was the same thing. Um, 4 13, this is what the same thing that happened. That um, you know what? Stand still and see the salvation of the land. God said, What are you doing here? Go forward. Now, see what happens here. Scripture says in 2 Chronicles 20 17, it says, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Now, when the scripture says you will not need to fight in this battle, what does it mean? If God says you will not need to fight, what does it mean? You won't need to fight, right? Many people misinterpret the speakings of God because of their level of immaturity 
or lack of understanding of scripture. When God tells you, maybe you just pray and God says, stand still. Stand still may not mean don't do anything. It may mean be patient. Be patient is different from, let me say this. To be patient is not equal being inactive. Patience does not equal inactivity. Many people, when they say, God told me to be patient, that means don't do, you see, <clears throat> we are going to expose Satan's tricks today. When they say, God, God, God said I should wait, that, what they are saying is, God said I shouldn't do anything. I shouldn't develop my giftings. I shouldn't hold my skills. I shouldn't maximize opportunities. I shouldn't do nothing. I should just sit down. He, he did, he, if God didn't tell you sit down, then don't sit down. When God tells you wait, does that mean don't improve? Because in life, you are either improving or there's nothing like you are stagnant. Really, really in life, there's nothing called stagnation. You are either making progress or you are retrogressing. There's no um, just stagnated in one spot. There's nothing like stagnated in one spot. Most people that say they are stagnated in one spot, they are sometimes, some of them are five years behind. They just don't know yet. Are we together, please? Are we together, please? Yes. Now, look at this. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Now, look at that. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Now, look at what God now said. Next. Tomorrow, uh -uh. go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Now, is that not, does that not look contradictory? That's why we call it the algorithm of vision. God just told you now, you know what? Stand still. You will see the salvation of God. And then the next thing God says, um, tomorrow, go out. You know what that means? Pursue your vision from a realm. Please write this down. Don't forget it. Pursue your vision from a realm of rest. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, when you are pursuing your dream, don't pursue it like an hustler. Many Christian folks are competing with Olamide. You can't succeed like that. You don't pursue your vision like the world. You, there is a manner of the kingdom. There is a way we behave in the kingdom. You don't pursue your dreams or your vision like an hustler. And I say this a lot, but you know, sometimes in leadership, it is not everything that a leader sees that he must say. But when you want to bring wisdom to God's people, you must let them see the reason why they shouldn't do what they are doing so that they can understand and be able to apply effectively. Listen, you don't pursue your vision like a hustler. You pursue your vision as a son. Knowing fully well that the one who gave you the vision has already seen the end before giving you the vision. Is somebody with me now? So when you are functioning as a child of God, you are functioning from a realm of rest. Somebody say, I function. I oh my, somebody say, I function, I function. from a realm of rest. Realm of Let's put it in a better way. Say, I function, I function. from the realm of rest. Realm of rest. Say, I operate. I, operate. I, pursue I pursue my vision. I pursue my destiny pursue my from the realm, the realm of rest. If you don't understand this, so, why, so this is what people do. They turn the speakings of God, they turn the message of faith into a yardstick for irresponsibility. So they say, God said it, I believe it, that settles it, and then they settle down. God said it, I believe it, that settles it, then I get up to go and do what I need to do. Is somebody listening to me? Yes. What settles it is your faith, but the proof of your faith is action. The proof that Elijah believed in the God who answers by fire was that he poured water upon the trenches and then he called the 27 year old, uh, 63 word prayer point and fire landed. The proof that El Elisha believed in the God of Elijah was that he cried, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Smote the mantle on Jordan and departed. The proof that Joshua believed in the God of Moses was that when he got to Jordan that was overflowing in his banks, he stretched, he, 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 he walked with the priests. They moved forward and as their feet touched the water, it parted. That's what we are talking about. Is somebody hearing me tonight? Yes. So the speakings of God is not to massage your ego or to fuel irresponsibility. When God speaks to you, he pumps faith in you so that you can pursue, overtake and recover. Are we together? Yes, Resilience. He builds, he builds a, I don't know how, how, how you feel. When you spend time with the world, one of the things he does, is he builds a superiority complex inside you. Mm. No superiority complex over another man, against another human being. No, no, that's what I said. 
So a superiority complex over the works of darkness, a superiority complex over the wickedness of the wicked is a, 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 a boost, a supernatural boost that makes you know, you know what, I can do all things. I can get this thing done. Some people, all they need is just a push of faith. You can do this thing. I'm talking to somebody tonight. I don't know what God has told you. It can be done. Can somebody tell me? It can be done. Can oh be my. Done. Somebody say, it can be done. It can say, be done. it shall be done. It shall say, be it done. will be it done. Be say, done. it is done. It if you believe it, say, it is done. It is done. Resilience. That, that you want to pursue your dream, you fail and then you stop. That's a sign that you don't really believe in that dream. Listen, whatever it can cost you, whatever it can take, it will take for you to abandon your vision. Whatever it will take for you to abandon your vision is actually the measurement of your conviction about it. If two failures, a little setback here and there, and then you, 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 you abandon that vision, that means it's either it was just a selfish ambition or you are not convinced of, of the God that spoke to you. Is somebody listen to me? Yes, sir. When we started KNI, after waiting a year in prayer here in Korea, when we started KNI, our first meeting, at, I don't remember, do you remember there was one of our meetings that were about maybe six? Yes. Eh? I would get there early, I would sweep the floor, would clean the whole place, I arrange everywhere, speak in tongues, I would wait on the other, I would study for hours, I would pray, and then four people come. Six people come. I think there was a time where we were very few. Then there was another time people came with buses from university, boom. But we didn't start with any bus from any university. One man first must believe what God has said before other people begin to join you. Are you guys listening to me? Yes. All of you here now, all of you have visions. If you don't believe, there is a way you believe in your vision that will convince other people to believe even before they hear God about you. Uh, is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Yes, some of you, you have vision that God told you something. And you know that this one is God that told you. And then you can't tell somebody else that looks superior. Listen, anybody you go to meet for counsel, you are actually indirectly giving the person power over you to give you instruction. Mm -hmm. And so if they, they, so you are giving a portion of your authority to that person in a way. So if the person is not secure in his own calling, he can, he can choke your dreams. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to kill a man's vision is, is when it is infant. The easiest way to kill a tree is when it is still you know, fledgling like this nursery is it's still, it's still little, you can uproot it. But when it becomes a mighty yoke, it's difficult to stop it. That's why I was teaching about the law of momentum. All right? That momentum is equals mass, a product of mass and velocity. It's a vector quantity. You see that? So, magnitude and direction. Magnitude and direction. So, you have direction, but you are, you are about to settle down so that you can begin to gain weight. And then people begin to scare you. But actually, you need you need people to scare you. Listen, if you are not actually scared, eh, maybe that vision is not big enough. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here this night. Eh? If you are not so you say, oh, I'm never scared. Is a see. We must get to a point in our Christianity where if you really want to mentor people, if you really want to help people, don't lie to them that ah, my faith was not like a lie. I just is a lie. Most of those things eh, is just to paint ourselves as the emoji. I mean, I, I, I don't do that, but listen, that's how we emoji. Just say, ah, I was the first time I prayed for that limbo. I had faith and I said, God, but, but, <laughs> but in a way, too, <laughs> God, it's only you can do this thing. We, we have to be. See, agree that, see, maybe when we get there, listen, you must agree, you must accept that you are afraid. I am actually afraid. Then you now look at the, you now look at the consequences attached to you not fulfilling the vision and the people he has sent you to, the generations that will waste away. You see that now? You look at the pros and cons, the advantage and the disadvantage. Then you now look at the God who called you. Is he capable? Are you listening to me? When you now look at that, then you now sit down with yourself. Will any man build a house except if I sit down and count what? So you now sit down and count. Many people will not fulfill vision because of fear. And that fear is not Satan that put that fear there. That fear is actually a phobia that comes as a result of lack of knowledge and understanding. When, when knowledge comes, when understanding comes, the Bible says the people who sit sat in great darkness, they have seen a great light. When you see light, then you can shine. When you see light, then you can know that there is hope. Animals that fall into pits, if there is darkness through the night, it may die there. But if they fall in the afternoon, they will still survive longer. Why? Because there is a ray of light. There is a ray of hope. 
Did somebody listen to me? There is a fear that comes with vision, with real vision. Don't let anybody lie to you that there is no fear. That's what I'm teaching on the law of resilience. There is fear. You'll be wondering, how, how would this thing come to pass? But as you begin to ask the Lord in prayer, as you begin to spend time on the laws that I've taught you, you begin to observe. One of the things you observe is that God will begin to give you instructions. You remember the three platforms? People, instructions, and principles. Remember, now as he begins to give you instructions, one of the things instruction does is, is like strategy. Alright? Strategy. Strategy. And then he knows, okay, okay, we, we, this is where we are going, but um, we are not getting there in two weeks. So the way some people are pursuing their dream, they are pursuing it as if the world were in tomorrow morning. There is a difference between passion and selfish ambition that leads to brashness. You know when you say somebody's brash, is is you you are not coordinated. Are we together? So there are people who are there is even between haste and speed. Speed is there is magnitude and there is direction. You know where you are going and then you accelerate. But hurry is, you are, you, you've, you've gotten to 200 meters before you remember you didn't take the batting. They say, hey, the batting, the batting, mommy. So many times people pursue their vision without being prepared. Listen, you cannot over prepare, but you cannot stay forever preparing. So people say, I'm still preparing. For 30 years, God called them to do ministry. I'm still preparing. And now they're about to die. They say, Jesus is over for three and a half years and they're about to die. When they get to heaven, some of them, I don't want to get to heaven and regret that I didn't fulfill all that God planned for me. And I get to heaven and I found out that I ought to win 10 million souls and I want 500,000 souls and I'm dancing. No. You must fulfill your vision in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So look at that scripture. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not. Be not dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them for the Lord will be with you. Can I pray for somebody? The Lord is with you. Amen. Is it a prayer or a declaration? The Lord is with you. Amen. Somebody say go. go. This may not be for everybody, but you know that you have been preparing and this is what you... Go! That word. Go is an apostolic word. It's an action word. It's a, it's a verb. It's a prophetic verb. Go does not mean try and check again. He says... Go. That's it. Second Timothy chapter 4. Okay, ba, 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 ba. I want to provoke you into action this night. Go. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7. I have fought a good fight. You, no man will fulfill God's vision for his life un, until he puts up a fight. It's a fight. Somebody says it's a fight. It's a fight. Forget all this. I'm a war. I'm a, this, say it's a fight. It's a fight. It's a fight. We are talking of serious. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Which, listen, Paul was a strange man. That man was resili resilient. He failed. So people think Paul never failed. He failed many times. He suffered shipwreck. Imagine the whole apostle that God told you you are going. The ministry is going to be global. You are going to read the Gentiles. And, and then they suffer shipwreck. Imagine your, your, boat, your ship boat capsizes in the middle of the ocean. You are now shouting, hey, hey, by me. And he's a man of God. And God sent him. Listen, that God sent you on the journey does not mean that the road is not going to be rough. That God told you, launch that album or launch that track. It does not mean the money will just, you say, because God said it, the, money just, the money was waiting. <laughs> It's true that the money is waiting, but it's waiting in the realm of the spirit. There are a lot of things that we have to go through so that you can you can you can fit into the mold of the blessing that God is prepared for you. Can I tell you something? God has prepared blessing for you, but the reason why it has not come to some of us is because you are not prepared for the blessing. Bishop TDJ about about seven or ten years ago, I think was he a book now, a message a long time ago. He said, Can you stand to be blessed? Don't you think being blessed? You think being blessed among your peers or being really wealthy, you don't know it comes with its own side effects. How many of yours, when you were young, you didn't like rich people? You just look at this, oh, this evil people. It's the culture that put that mindset. Oh, this evil people. Anybody that has more than two say is a evil abalist. I mean, by default, you just say this person, this person's child is useless. <laughs> useless, useless. As if he's God that said, you see. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 
God instructs you, then expect all hell to break loose against you. If God, listen, so when God prepares a blessing for you, he also now comes into time to prepare you for the blessing. Some of us can't handle what is coming. So th those little, little setbacks, are, some of them are tokens, of, some setbacks are tokens of mercy to bring us into alignment. Is somebody hearing me tonight? Some setbacks are tokens of mercy to bring us into what? Let me see. Every problem in my life, listen, every problem in your life cannot die. If every problem in your life dies, even you have died. Because the only place where there is no problem is the graveyard. Uh, is somebody hearing me? Yes, sir. Let's demystify failure. F failure is just an event. It's not a life. It is, when you, it is what you choose to do with failure that determines where you now end up a failure in your life. As long as you still have breath in you, you are not yet a failure. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. Is somebody learning something tonight? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. In fact, sometimes the criticism you receive is from people who have gone ahead of you in your field. People that you look up to. These are they. And then you take maybe your work to them and then they say, now I'm not saying shoddy work. Oh, you didn't do your own work. You did rubbish. They now gave you constructive criticism. You say everybody's against me. <laughs> That's self-deception. It will destroy you. I'm saying you've done your own work very well. But out of some insecurity, they just tell you that it is nonsense you are doing. And then you 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 want to give in. God forbid. Joshua chapter 1. Is somebody there? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. See what the Bible says. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9 says, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong. Somebody say, be strong. be strong. Can you tell your neighbor here? Say, be strong. Be strong. Say it with audacity. Say, be strong. be strong. Somebody shout it in your house. Where you are. Say, be strong. Be strong. be strong. be strong. Be strong. And of a good courage. Now, look at that. See, <laughs> many things in life are actually neutral. Not everything is. Sometimes some things are not just good. They are not just, but they are just neutral. It's what you do with them. The substance that affects them. Can I give you an instance? There is bad courage. Bad courage is what we call arrogance. That you are you are zealously pursuing the ambition, and it is you are just being diligent in the wrong ass. You know, a man can be diligently doing the wrong thing. And he too, when you hear the kind of message, he, he or she will say, I, I'm, I'm, they are talking to me. I'm diligent, I'm courageous, I'm resilient. Resiliently doing the wrong thing is a sure path to eternal frustration. Is somebody listening to me? Be of good courage. Be not afraid. That means God knows that you will be afraid. God will not give you an instruction if he doesn't know that the circumstances contradicting it are sure going to come against you. Are we together? God knows that you are going to face a contradictory situation. He knows. And so you already told Joshua down. Joshua, <laughs> number one, be strong. Number two, be of good courage. Uh -huh. Be not afraid. Number four, neither be thou dismayed. Uh -uh. Is it not in one, in, once have I spoken to us, Abby? Why can, couldn't God just say it once? Joshua, be strong. Mm -mm. God said, uh -uh, it's not enough. Be of good courage. Be strong. Be not afraid. Be not dismayed. In just one verse of the Bible. <laughs> okay, say with me. Say, have good courage. Have good courage. Be, strong. be strong. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord God, the Lord thy God, is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. Look at that. I want you to know, my friends, that when you begin to pursue your vision, many things will be against you. But the scripture says, if God be for us. So I've heard people say, if God be for us. Oh yeah, finish it now, guys. Who can be against us? Everybody will shout, nobody. <laughs> fa, fa, fa. Oh. Wow. There is nowhere in the scripture where the Bible says, if God for who, nobody will be against us. If God be for us, the devil automatically is against us. 
the world and the flesh are against us. But guess what? They will not overwhelm us. They will not overthrow us. They will not overshadow us. But they are against us. Is somebody listening to me? Hmm. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Lay in the bedrock so that I begin to speak. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Ah, I love this scripture. I can do all things. Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So, you can do many things, but you can do all things that pertain to what God wants you to get done through Christ. That strengthens you. So that means that the power of the believer, your, your advantage in discovering and fulfilling his vision for your life is actually a supernatural edge. So as much as you are engaging uh, natural principles, you must understand that there is also a supernatural dimension to your life. This is what motivational speakers used to leave out. There is a supernatural dimension to your life. This is where priesthood, that's why I spoke the other time about prayer. This is where priesthood begins to make sense. There are some people shouting about priesthood, but they are spooky. They are not doctrinally sound about it. So they say priesthood is as a realm when you enter in the mortal. <clears throat> priesthood simply is that ability of the believer to partner with the Holy Spirit and the word with the wisdom of God engaged in order that the will of God that is settled in heaven find the expression where in earth. That's priesthood. So all the other grammar is just for yeah, it's just it's just to waste people's time. Priesthood is discerning what the will of the Lord is part time. Engaging his system on the earth and enforcing his will here and now. That's priesthood. Is somebody listening to me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can do all things through Christ. With strength. Please say with me, I can do all things. I can do all things. If you notice you are struggling from, with, from, with inferiority complex, most of the times it's because of lack of discovery of purpose or your blueprint or your identity. When you know what, where you are going and you start pursuing it gradually, your confidence begins to heighten. Not arrogance, not pride, not ego. But confidence it begins to come a healthy confidence a healthy self-esteem and as that begins to happen then you begin to pursue things that otherwise you would not have pursued before so i can somebody say when you wake up in the morning and you are down don't keep when people wake up in the morning most people are just quiet they just wake up they are just quiet like silent and i don't no, no, no. when you wake up in the morning if you cannot pray in the holy ghost first thank god Thank God in your language. Thank God in whatever biblical way you know. Thank God. If you can't do that, start by telling yourself, I can do. Self-talk is very powerful. No matter how many friends you have, the greatest, your greatest companion when it comes to talking is yourself. As you are walking on the street, you are actually talking to yourself. Right? Now, I'm not saying those who play it on the outward way that, that they'll be talking. Hey, sorry, what do they say the time is? They say it's 2 o'clock. Is it tomorrow that they say they'll be like... Is it now anyway? There's no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying self-talk. What, what you tell yourself, your, your personal inner mirror, all right? The law of inner mirror I told you about the other time. Your personal image is reinforced or affected greatly by what your language, your past, what the words you use. What you, Some of us, the words we use, if they turn it into a book, it will never sell till thy kingdom come. Because the words, they are full of pity, all right? Discouragement, lack, mediocrity, failure, fear. and No, 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 no. Talk victory before you see victory. Is somebody listening to me? Yes, so tell yourself now. Practice classwork. Say, I can do all things. I can, I can do, do all things. things. Through, Christ, through Christ. Who gives me strength. Who gives me Say strength. it ten times. One, two, go. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Three. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Four. I can do all things through Christ. Five. I will know if you are doing it. Six. I can do all things through Christ. Seven. I can do all things through Christ. Eight. I can do all things through Christ. Nine. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Ten. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Now that the more you say it, one of the things that happens is that. You, the more, the more you, 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 even your body begins to react to it. If somebody listen to me. There is energy. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. For instance, if you, if you say, 
if I say, okay, let's do this. Say I am weak five times. One, two, go. I, I am, am weak. weak. One. I am weak. Two. Everybody say I it. It's weak. class work. Three. I am weak. Four. I am weak. Five. I now, weak. it's okay. You see, you see, you are so weak that you forgot the number of the year. You know why? Your words affect your psyche. It goes into your subconscious to determine, to predetermine how you will respond when what has not yet happened now gets to happen. So sometimes some things happen and some people is like reflex. They just attack that thing and get it done. And you're like, hey, how did you do it? And the person like, it looks automatic. It's not, nothing is automatic. It was programmed to happen that way. Uh, is somebody with me? So, so, so like now, this COVID season now, some of us have actually been prepared for COVID before COVID came. That's why you can thrive in COVID. And you're not about to learn. You're already thriving in COVID. Why? Because the word of God prepares you for what is yet to come. You know what that means? In the wisdom of God, if you are in a ministry that is aligned, God was actually already preparing the saints even before COVID came. Forget all this. Hey, nobody knew there was COVID. Some days before, which, some days before COVID, did, did you not hear the prophetic word? Yes. Was it not clear and accurate? Even if we didn't call it COVID, are we not seeing this? Is it not obvious? So we say, there is no good. Forget about that. Listen, whether people claim they received their COVID, COVID, or they didn't receive COVID, at least we know that the teachings of the word of God that has been brought over time already prepared us. So when COVID came, all we needed to now do is implement what the word already installed in you. You are not trying to look for the answer. If you are still trying to look for the answer in this season in COVID, you are, you are behind schedule. What we are doing is implementation. You see that? A tree does not live where it is. A tree does not need to change location. It uses the root system, either tap root or fibrous root, to fish out nutrients. And right there where it is, that's why I tell people, your prosperity is not in traveling all around and running all around. People say, our oh, location is important. You must understand what location is first in the spirit. Your most important location is to be in the will of God. When you are in the will of God, if you even if you are in the desert like prophet Elijah, God will send Riven to locate you without a GPS system. Is somebody listening to me? <laughs> Uh, is somebody together with me? Okay, now, you said I am weak how many times? Five times. But you said this is time. You were so weak. You said this. Now, say again, I am strong. Five times. Solid times. One, two, go. I, I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. Aha. Uh -huh. I am strong. That's right. I'm strong. So somebody say, ah, when, so when you are afraid, don't quickly confess your faith. Don't say, hey, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. And you stay like that. I see, identify that I'm actually, I'm actually scared of this. But listen, don't, don't dwell on it. Identify fear, but don't dwell on fear. Is This thing is wisdom. You are, you are also playing a trick on your mind because your mind is not the same as your spirit. What is a reality in your spirit may not yet become a, a reality in your mind. Is some, are we together? Yes, sir. What is a reality in your spirit, man, may not yet be a reality in your mind. And for you to be able to bring your mind to align with it, that's why the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the what? Mm -hmm. Renewing. So you must constantly, um, you know, confess as you are reading and you are meditating, you confess what you want to see that aligns with God's word. So while you are saying, okay, I want to pursue this dream, we are going to be global. I have some globes here in my shelf. Every night, if there's ever a night I need pray on it, maybe very few. Every night I carry that globe. I pray in the spirit, all right, and I begin to prophesy. This ministry is international. Kingdom Network is international. We bless life across the nations. We bless lives across board in various levels in the social strata. While we know that our focus is youth and teenagers, even the adults, they are receiving healing and miracles. They are receiving wisdom and direction for their lives. The gifts of the spirit are finding expression in their lives. Youth and teenagers are discovering purpose. Internationally, we are becoming well-known. We are receiving help. We are being favored. Gates of nations are open unto us. That's how I declare at night. I, we, I pray, I pray. Before I, the, the, I have one of the globes I have, all right, uh, is the type that you can blow wind into. The other one you can't blow wind into it is, is, is the strong one. So what I do is until I've prayed for one hour, I don't blow wind into it. I'm teaching you systems. Let me not take it beyond that. I would have said something else, but I, I don't know if people can undo it. I do, I, when I pray for one hour, then I blow into it. With that, that combustion of prayer and confession, I blow into it and then I seal it. So somebody else will just look and say, ah, it's focused in the US because he put it on Amazon. There are many books on Amazon for many years that have not sold one, one, one page. 
there are systems in this kingdom. That's why I say you must ask God to show you your own strategy. When he shows you your own strategy, you do little things and it has great effect. Not because others, others can do the same thing with you and have different results. Why? Because the one that gave the instruction is a king. He knows this person follow process and so you must see results. But the other person will do the same thing and be wondering why. Because there is a mentality too that must back that action. So when the right mentality does not back an action, you, are, you won't see results. Are we together? Yes, sir. All right. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. Join me, Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 30. And we know, it's a popular scripture. And we know, somebody say, and we do. See, and we you see let me teach you, guys, when you want to read Bible, don't rush it. All right? Then read it. Read it as if it's God that is actually talking. As if it's really Jesus that is reading it to you like Jesus. Imagine Jesus is reading the Bible to you. Will you pay attention? So people just, you yeah, know, we know. How can you say, and we know? And you're like, and we know that all things work together. There's, some, there's a way some people read that scripture and I know this one don't know. Just read it and sit down. If you know it, now let's read Romans 8, 28. One, two, go. And we know. Somebody say, I Say it again. And, and, and we, know. it means, and we are convinced. We understand how it works. We are convinced. We have seen the result many times. We are not guessing. And we know that how many things now? All all things. Including failure. Somebody say all things. All all including things. disappointment. Say all things. All all including things. betrayal. Say all things. All all things. things. Including mistakes. Say all things. All, all, things. Things. all those things will what? Work together. Notice, it didn't say work separate from themselves. Mm. Do you know what that means? Sometimes even the delays we experience, while it is true that you don't, you don't just permit unnecessary delay, you know, you are slothful in business, then you say it's because of that delay that God is using it. It's true that God can use it, but slothfulness is not permitted in the kingdom. Romans 12, 11, say not slothful in business. Fathering his spirit is serving the Lord. You see that? I'm not talking of delay caused by slothfulness. I'm not talking about that one. I'm saying you are doing what you ought to do, and then suddenly some delays come. All right? Some things that you were not expecting to happen, happen. You know what that means? That means that this scripture too must still be fulfilled in your life. All things. Let me give an example. When we wanted to upload some of our books on, um, is it on Amazon now, we didn't know that some of them still, even after many of us have edited, there, there were still typographical errors. And so while the uploader on Amazon was, you know, busy giving us a little, little, you know, tough time, was busy this and that. <laughs> We just called back all the books and began to what? Re-edit, add some finishing touches, remove some things. You'll be surprised that by the time we are, we are now about to re-upload now, by the time we are uploading, we've corrected it at least 10, 10 times each, each book. You know what that means? It has become 10 times better than what it would have been. Somebody say, we know we that know. all things. Oh. So the delay of a man can also be to the, your advantage as a kingdom ambassador. Because you are not functioning naturally from time. You function from eternity. So, no matter what happens, God can still out another mystery that in time you still fulfill all that you need. Just like when David got to Ziklag and found out that he was plundered. He said, Lord, should I pursue? Will I overtake and will I recover? What did God tell him? Pursue? Overtake? I prophesy upon my friends of Mixella in the name of Jesus, pursue. Amen. Overtake. Amen. And recover. Amen. My friends on Facebook, pursue, overtake, and recover. Amen. My friends on Telegram, pursue, overtake, and recover. Amen. My friends on YouTube, pursue, overtake, and recover. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we know. That's the understanding that I have. So, Chin and yeah, you've been waiting for, how many years have you wanted to release an, um, a track, actually? How, how long has it been in your heart that you want to release a track? How? Long time, like one year, six months, five years, two years. Two years. That's 24 months, right? And it's been on you. And I'm sure the day it came to your mind was as if the next week. You will notice that even the song that you might wanted to sing that time may not be the song you are singing now. What has happened? You have become better, right? Now, does, now that means that the delay worked together for your good too. What if you had now compromised God's will by trying to maybe scam somebody or give your body or something and then you produced the, uh, a church, a Christian uh, a album with the money of an, uh, um, with the money of 
somebody unrighteous person it doesn't matter you unrighteous person you brought the money of unrighteousness to serve in the sanctuary of zion now do you think the blessing of god will be upon that music at best your family and friends you know this phony friend they will just buy and to encourage you and that's all the hand of god will not be upon it so all things i'm encouraging somebody Part of all things is the instructions of God. Hey, I'm about to say some things. Listen, do you know that sometimes the instructions of God look as if they are placing a limitation upon us? Sometimes God tells you, if you sit down there. That's why I tell people. Most people who believe that God has called them to pioneer things. Most people, most people who are called to pioneer things, most of them are always called first to serve another person. It's the pathway in the kingdom. But unfortunately, if you don't understand it, you'll be busy pursuing your own thing, calculating your own, your own what, your own benefit, seeking to carve a niche for your own self and forget about the corporate vision. And you, when God is now coming to mark your report card of your faithfulness so that he can give you your own, you will now be found wanting because you'll be found out that you were not faithful in another man's business. So who will give you your own? So you see some people, they will, be, they will claim that vision till tomorrow, but the, there is no grace for establishment. It's because when they were under somebody too, they didn't really serve. Their heart was not really there. Is somebody with me tonight? What is resilience? The ability to recover from crisis or trauma. Let me not lie to you. Some people have, some people have been traumatized in this corona season. And yet some people are getting fatter and finer in this corona season. Even some of our brothers that, I mean, the, the Lord has been faithful in the name. Ability to recover from trauma. The ability to undo stress and become better because of pain. The ability to undo stress and become better because of pain or in spite of pain. Now listen to this. On the part of actualizing your vision, you will be unappreciated. The reason we're talking about resilience is because everything that needs to come opposite of your vision is going to come. And if you are not aware now, when it comes, it will look as if God left you. Sometimes you will say, I felt as if the heaven was as brass. All of us have been there. Uh, it's as if God, the God even was short, as if God is no more speaking to me. Now you now start singing, Lord, you see so far away, a million times away. He seems today. Then Domain song will make sense to you. Domain was is a wise man. <laughs> you, you buy it quickly because he's speaking your language. Is somebody with me? You will feel unappreciated. Not you will feel, what do you mean you will feel? You will be unappreciated. You will experience betrayals. There are few people who I know who are, who are doing anything great, who have not been betrayed. Almost never. Surprising failures. You did it so well, you say, yes! It's not, and then, on the night of that, your meeting, the gen of, and they did not on for four hours. And everybody just gathered and shared, and said, we well, thank God, well, don't worry, next time. And then you try to do macho man, with, ah, yes, yes, ah, that's how it happens. And then when you get back to your unit, and start crying, you say, ah, God, God, and this person was there, they would have seen the grace of God. Hey. <laughs> Is somebody with me tonight? Yes. Hey. Mm. You would experience betrayal, surprising failures. You would have unmet expectations. But your response must still be faith and resilience. Your response must be advancing despite of adversity responding you see resilience we can even define resilience as advancing despite adversity resilience advancing making progress even in the midst of ruins advancing despite adversity who is not going through tough times in this season who wants to lie that is not but yet you're advancing <laughs> May your life be a testimony. Ah, this season, my God. God is really changing lives in this season. I'm telling you. Dreams that people have had that has not come to pass for five, six years. In this season, may your dream come to pass. Amen. May God show himself faithful on Amen. your behalf. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Now, listen to this. You cannot determine the response of those you are sent to serve. Mm. These things I'm teaching you are very deep. It took me time to think about this. 
When you begin to serve your gift and serve God's purposes and you are pursuing vision and you are even doing it, you cannot determine the response of the people. For instance, if I tell you guys now, all of you shout earlier 1,000 times. I can't, I can't determine whether you shout it or not. You see that? I can preach powerful messages and send you the, and upload it and download it back and send you the link and say, this is it. Be blessed by it. You, you may decide not to listen to it. Is that true? I'm sent, called, sent to serve you. But you decide not to listen to it. You don't even appreciate because you, you didn't even listen to it. So how will you appreciate it? And then I'm feeling frustrated. No. You cannot determine the response of those you are sent to serve and inspire. But you can determine your faithfulness to your vision and your attitude to their response. Hmm. Listen, I'm telling some of you, it's 10 years time, you'll get to understand. Some is 40 years when they're 35. Listen, you, 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 you can't determine their response, but you can determine the degree of your own faithfulness to what God called you. God didn't say it is required of a steward to be found famous. He said it is required in every steward that they be found faithful. So the yardstick of God for measuring the success of a man is not faith, it's faithfulness. Yeah. Somebody say faithfulness. faithfulness. Say faithfulness. faithfulness. Remember the law of priorities. Faithfulness over fame. Uh-huh. Faithfulness, over success. faithfulness. Then your attitude to their response. You can decide to be bitter and then cave in and then not fulfill your ministry again. That's why I tell people, why you pursue... Remember this, um, Tim Lahaye wrote a book many years ago. Why you act the way you do. I'm trying to read the book. Many people are actually... Now, but I want to bring it to perspective of motive. Many people are actually bitter in their pursuit of vision. The vision was from God, but they have been corrupted by the waters of bitterness. And it is simply because their motive was not right. The vision was from God. The motive was not right. And I tell people, hmm, your reaction to failure when you are pursuing the will of God, your reaction to the bad attitude of people when you are doing what is actually right reveals to us your true motive. Your reaction to situations reveal to us the true motive behind your action. So you said that uh, we did, for instance, we did our charity for God. And then on that day, I instructed, I said, no, no picture whatsoever at all from beginning to end. And then you say, and they say, ah, yes, no picture. And then you go at the back and snap the picture and later upload it, maybe when I'm not around. Your reaction actually showed that you didn't really want to give the people. You just wanted to use them to advance your personal cause. You see that now? Yeah. Somebody say reaction. Yeah. Some people come to me for instructions. Or some people meet some of us. You, some of you are leaders mentoring people too. They come for instructions. And then you tell them, um, can you can you be patient with this thing? And then they say, I've heard, we have heard you. But I've heard in Yoruba, Mugba ni Mugba. I've heard, not I, I will be. They say, I've heard. And then two weeks after that time, you are no more their mentor. They carry another picture of a man that they will never meet and they are not accountable to. They say, hey, see my mentor. I celebrate you, daddy. You have imparted me. And, and the man doesn't know them from Adam or Eve. And they don't know him. They don't have his phone number. They say, it's my mentor now. It's my new mentor. My new mentor. Hmm. One of the biggest obstacles to greatness is ego. And this is how it works. Ego will make you not want to submit to somebody who can criticize you. The God will make you look for only people who can say, hey, you're well done, you're well done. You should have people in your life who actually, by default, they don't. their goal is not to actually criticize you. But because they, they are blessed, all right, they don't want, they are not looking for what you want to give them. So they are comfortable and at peace to tell you, see, this thing, madam, you are wrong. It's not right. Repent, apologize, or stop it. And it doesn't sting your ego because they, they are ahead of you. So there's no ego, there's no, you are not competing with them. They are not your mate or colleague in ministry. You see that? But some of us don't have people like that. That's why sometimes I like, I like to look for people who I feel can critique me in a way. So I just get close to that. I just want to see their reaction. Even though sometimes too, you are not, you are not happy. There's nobody that likes actually being criticized. See, you know, the average human being doesn't like it. But then they can tell you, this is your vision statement. This is your... Um, it's quite poor. Can, 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 you, can you see work on this? No, no, that's what God gave me from heaven. Sometimes we just call God's name in vain. We call it into something that is our. Just say, is that how I feel? Don't say, that's how God gained from heaven. So people want to make this relationship decision. Is that what they do? 
they come and say god has already shown me the person i mean we are just we don't want we've even chosen it but I, daddy i want you to let me pray on it daddy let me pray on it so i tell them you didn't come for counsel you came to inform me it's different from instruct me you see that inform me is not the same as instruct me inform me is um uh, well just to let you know that um, the Lord has spoken to us and um, we are working on our parents know everybody knows it's just you that you're about to know I've told you that and yet you've already told those your parents who is your pastor <laughs> yeah yeah on that day I remember when on campus somebody impregnated somebody and they somebody somebody and they gave birth I don't know they were not in our fellowship they just came from nowhere and one lady just met me one day like that after said I say I just brought the baby and say um let me come and name the baby uh, I said yeah for nine months, I have not known you from Adam. You waited till nine months. I didn't know you. And they said, yeah, I should just come inside the other time and name the baby. I said, ah, name which baby? So I referred them to the regional headquarters. Go and meet. <laughs> they said, no, I, 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 I just, they just named the baby. And I said, take another. I said, ah, yeah, no. Then I put one small envelope something. Eh. <laughs> Where? Well, your response. John Kennedy Tool. He said something very powerful. He was actually the, right, the author of um, Confederacy of Dunces. He wrote a book called Confederacy of Dunces. Now, let me tell you one funny thing about this young man. John Kennedy, actually, he wrote a book, Confederacy of Dunces. He took it to publishers. He took it to publishers to help him publish, you know. Abroad, not like here that you can often self-publish, but now people do that a lot. It's now viral. So he took it, you know, publishers, they would just take some commission, they will help you push the book, they would do everything, it's just, it's just your profit as a result of your intellectual. The audio, I was told the audio is repeating itself. Or maybe it's the network, sir. Maybe it's the network, we apologize for that. It may be the network. Okay, so listen now. Are we together? Yes. And then he, he, he guess what he did? He wrote Confederacy of Dunces. His mother was still alive. And he went and committed suicide inside a car on an empty road. Ah. Only for his mother sometime later to discover the book and push that publishers, they should review this book and they can, and then they printed the book. The book later won the Pulitzer Prize Award. That's one of their, when you're a writer and you win, it's just like saying you're a Nobel laureate. And guess what? The man took it too far by responding negatively to criticism. Criticism ought to be a stepping stone to another level of greatness and refining. But he used it as his, as his tombstone and he destroyed it. Okay, he said it's okay now. Thank you so much for your feedback. God bless you. He said it's okay now. Mix our family, shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, so. Don't let externals determine your sense of worth and sense of value. That's part of resilience. Because, listen, if you are not comfortable in your calling, when you start and everything is rough, you may be tempted to give up. True of us. Mm. There is something in Greek mythology called katabasis. Katabasis actually means katabasis. K-A-T-A-B-A-S-I-S. Katabasis means a going down. It means experiencing obstruction that leads to depression. But guess what? Every time, every great man that I know of, that I've read of, even in biographies, actually had a season in their life, a catabasistic season in their life. A season of catabasis, where everything looked as if it was not working. But the only thing that was working was their faith in that dream, in that vision. And guess what happened? Most of them will go through that. By the time they come out, they come out with heightened knowledge and deeper understanding. They come back oftentimes better than what they were before they entered into that quagmire. Is somebody listening to me, please? Yes. Our most significant progress is made when we are thoroughly demolished, inflicted, and left for dead. Remember the scripture in John, is it John 12, 24? Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abided alone. But if it dies, if conditional statement if it dies it beareth more fruit you know what that means that your, your 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 dream your vision cannot be fulfilled if you are afraid to fail it cannot be fulfilled if you are scared there are people who are scared of failure there are people who are scared that i don't want to fail at all i don't want to. you are going to fail many times 
But as long as you are resilient, as long as you know that failure is not final and then it will not be fatal. Are we together? Because Jesus, even Jesus who said the certain kind of we first to the ground, of course, he was already giving us a, pro a prophetic telescoping of his death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus was in the tomb. And he, he gave up the ghost, he died. And on the third day, by the power of the resurrection, Romans chapter 1 verse 4, and was declared to be the son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by his resurrection from the dead. And that was when he was coronated Lord and Christ and the official baptizer of men in the Holy Ghost. Are we together? Because it is in those times of depression and pain that you come face to face with truth. And guess what? Some people in their entire lifetime, they've never been able to come face to face with truth. Truth about God. Truth about who they really are. Some people, <clears throat> my God, they've not been stripped of pretense. They've not come to that point where things they know about themselves, but I've been very scared to admit. Where they come face to face, I know, I know this about myself, but I've been scared to admit it. I say, no, Larry, is actually, is, is, you're actually timid. It's like there is timidity in you, and we need to deal with this. Thing. Not, well, I'm not timid, but you know. Then you come face to face with yourself and say, you know what? Let's take destiny head on. What are we going to do to make progress? This is how it works. Hemingway. In his book, Hemingway, have you, do you remember? Is here Hemingway? Hemingway, farewell to arms. A farewell to arms. You must have read that book. If you, unless you didn't go to somewhere to. The world breaks everyone, and afterward, many are strong at the broken places. But those that will not break, it kills. Let me say that again. The world breaks everyone. We're talking about resilience. The world breaks everyone and afterward, many are strong at the broken places. But those that will not break, it kills them. Because when, when you go through seasons of adversity, you begin to find out that you are not as great as you think. You begin to learn to stay focused. And then you begin to desire, you begin to have a desire to do better because you are not as great as you thought you were. Some of us think, I'm the best uh, public speaker in the world. Don't you listen to another 12-year-old girl? Like, what, not, what am I doing? But you know what? No, most people don't. Many people don't really heed to mistakes, even by silent corrections, until something bad, really bad happens to them. Then it gets their attention and they're like, ah, okay, so yeah, so what do we do now? You would think maybe a gentle correction will shoo that that childishness away. That ah oh, no, no, don't don't do like this. Mm, it won't until they meet with their Waterloo and then they find out ah okay ah, I will change now. It's like we will say ah don't be in debt. They borrow money from like thirty people. One day they will not feel like committing suicide. They will not go and sit down in one, their balcony and they will be like ah okay. It's like this debt is bad. Where did the Bible say we should never owe debt? <laughs> I'm praying that the circumstances that will bring you closer to vision may begin to happen quickly in your life. Amen. You said amen. Say amen again. Amen. amen. In that season of adversity, that's where you are able to separate ego from reality. Some of us deceive ourselves a lot. I'm the best that happened since Coca-Cola. But you separate ego. That see, see, I, I don't know many things. Even as a writer, I don't deceive. That's why I read books a lot. I read every day. You don't deceive yourself because you wrote a book and say, ah, what do we know? For <laughs> what there is nothing that you have learned that people have not known, even before before your grandfathers were born. Some things that you're writing, they've said it. Some of us are actually saying whatever they are said. It may just be changing the diction. So if but, but when we come to humble ourselves and you you have a clear head, you are clear headed. You are not suffering for inferiority complex, but you know your limitations. And then you now begin to grow yourself so that your transformation can begin to find expression. Hold yourself to a standard that exceeds what society might consider to be objective success. So people tell you, at this level, you are, you are the best. See, don't, don't always stay around people who only tell you that you are the best. Some of us, we just like, you know, just people who just tell you, hey, you are... You, you are the greatest man of God in the world. Imagine, imagine now. I mean, somebody just wants to destroy me and then just say, Pastor Larry, you are the greatest man. In this COVID season, you are the greatest man of God in the world. Mm -hmm. And then me too. And then me too, I'm like, mm. and, and then I'm smart. And I'm like, hey, glory to God. Then I go to my room and I'm like, mm, okay. 
and the people are beginning to see this apostolic grace, they are knowing that you know God is helping us. Where, where, where is God that is helping us? You know, <laughs> that's the beginning of downfall. That is the beginning of what? It's the beginning of downfall to start thinking you have arrived when you've not even scratched the surface. Now, what are the domains of resilience? Six domains of resilience. Let's hurry now. Six domains of resilience. Number one, collaboration. Collaboration is when you join forces with others to accomplish a greater goal. Listen, some things you can't achieve on your own. No matter, you, you try from now to tomorrow. That's why I look at people. When you want to start out and you feel that God has sent you to serve or support a vision, don't force yourself to go and start on your own. Most times you can't handle the pressure. Are we together? Are we together? Yes, uh, collaboration. Collaboration. Remember in mathematics, we were taught about set and subset. Do you remember? Set and subset. Number two, tenacity. Tenacity. When you're talking about tenacity, you're talking about a realistic optimism. So people claim they are optimistic, but it's foolishness. Realistic optimism. Okay, this thing can be achieved. Not uh, if everybody says it can't be achieved, then you know that this thing you can't do. It's like saying in the next two days, you're going to have 40 billion. You are not into tech. You are not into nothing. You are not doing anything. You just, you just wake up and say, I prophesy it. It won't happen like that. Listen, the realm of the spirit too is not stupid. It's this program. Prophecy to the spirit of prophecy too is wise. You won't just carry that. Bring it to you. When you're talking about tenacity, you're talking about persistence. Have you seen weeds before? John Mason in his book, Imitation is Limitation. He called it the tenacity of the weed. You don't plant weeds, but they grow. You cut them, what happens again? The, the real plant that you are planted, they are not really great. <laughs> the tenacity of the weed. Number three, vision. Vision again. Vision again. You remind yourself of what you have seen. Resilience. You may even be crying. Ah, ah, thank God for his message. There are times when I, I open my diaries. The things God has told me. And as I'm praying in the spirit sometimes, I will even know that tears are already falling on the diary. I'll just pray. Then I'll look at it again. Ah, God, you said this. And then I begin to war with the words that God has given me. Let me ask you, which word has God actually given you? Some of us, there's no, no word that God has given you. You only wrote it down by yourself. No word that God has given you. And you want to engage destiny like that. You do, your, your utterance in the realm of the spirit is taking what God has told you, putting it in your mouth and uttering it back in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Number, f is there number four now, number three? Four. Number, four. number one is what? Collaboration. Collaboration. Number two? Uh, still persistence and number three is vision number four is reasoning reasoning that's why i said realistic optimism reasoning when you're talking about reasoning you are talking about resourcefulness finding ways to piece together resources that will help you actualize your vision don't think you won't think because god has spoken you won't engage your mind no you have to think problem solving is also part of reasoning you begin to develop your problem-solving ability, your problem-solving skill. Hmm. Is that number five now? Are we number five now? Yes. yes, then five now. Collaboration, tenacity, vision, reasoning. Five, health. Health. When I'm talking about health, I'm talking about paying attention to good nutrition. As simple as this thing is. Many people are losing energy to pursue their vision. Because they are playing with their health. Even though they are young or they are old. N nutrition, alright. Good habits, good eating habits, good rest habits, exercise, and good sleep. Amen. Good sleep. Hmm. I remember one time in my book, Striving for the Mastery, it should be out sometime soon by God's grace. Striving for the Mastery, I was teaching about, um, I think, the weapons of our warfare, and I began to speak about the body. You know, most of we just say spiritual and body, spiritual and body. The body. Do you know that one of your tools, even in spiritual warfare, is the body? Your physical body. It's a tool too. You know why? Your legality in the physical realm is actually made possible because of your earth suit, your physical body. If your body dies, your spirit departs. <laughs> That's why you can cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Why? Because demons don't have the legal rights to operate in the realm of man. Are we together? Yes, you see why Satan wants to possess people? So, if you lose your earthly suit, that means you cannot engage in the physical realm again. You have to depart. And you know what? 
if the quality of your blood is affected, huh, your health is affected, the tendency to live long too is already affected in a way. And by that, the will of God, I ought to find a solution. Maybe you ought to live 120, and then you cut it to 32. Even though you make it to heaven, so when you get it, they will say you came too soon. Are we together? Your health. Number six now, right? Composure. Your composure. That means that ability to regulate your emotions. That ability to interpret events and situations accurately and not become bitter. All right? Interpretation. Interpretation bias. You regulate your emotions. How do you build personal resilience? How do you build personal resilience with respect to your vision? How do you build personal resilience with respect to your vision? Number one, let's see scripture. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinful, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the river. We bring forth the fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You see that? Irrespective of the season. How do you get that done? Number one, make vital connections. Hmm. Resilience. Ability to pull through, to thrive, irrespective of circumstances. Make what? Vital. I didn't just say just make any connection. Vital connections. How do you make vital connections? What do I mean by that? Cultivate good relationships. I think I already thought on the law of relationships. Yeah. Cultivate healthy relationships. Learn to support others in their own vision too. Because this thing is a teamwork. If you not listen, if you are used to helping others, others too will be wanting to help you. L learn to support others and then learn to accept help. There are some people, they give a lot, but they, 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 they don't know how to ask. And we pride ourselves, we say, I don't ask anybody for anything. <laughs> he looks, you know, he's part of ego. We feel proud about it. I don't ask anybody to help me with anything. I mean, like as if you are the doer of everything. We need help. We so my mean my messages would not have gotten to some place if some of us didn't share it on our statuses. You see that some people would not have been born again if they didn't have you send the message to their guardians. It's just like, the best of men cannot reach every man. Riyad Bonke, God bless his soul. May he rest. He, he didn't reach. There are some people that are not born again in our area. There is us that will reach them. You see that. Cultivate relationships. Invest in people. Be part of people's success. Always find ways to be part of people's success. So young people have a dream around your friends. Find just find ways to support. Let it be obvious that this is support. Even no joy. Support. Just find ways to help. You know, pray for them, give to them. Find, let it cost you. So say we are praying for you and they let it cost you something. I tell people, one of the ways you can test whether people truly believe in your dreams is not just only prayer, is their counsel dear. Is their commitment dear or is their money dear? It's difficult for somebody not to believe in your dream and actually give you money for it. It's difficult. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number two, look for self discovery opportunities, resilience. Look for self discovery opportunities. Attend workshops, attend seminars, find ways to serve in places that can also steer your potentials and bring out the best in you. By that, you begin to know yourself. You begin to identify your strength and your self-worth begins to increase. Self-discovery opportunities. Are we together? Sometimes they say there's an opening here and there's an opportunity and you feel you still have time. It won't affect you and you can, you can put up for it or apply for it or learn it or practice. You, you go ahead. Number three, accept change as part of living. Accept change as part of living. In accepting change as part of living, you are also admitting that the way to success is the way of many risks. I see people say, I don't want to take any risk. You don't want to take any risk, then you don't want to succeed. Very simple. 
If you cannot take risks, you cannot succeed. If you cannot take risks, you cannot succeed. You see that? So when you accept change as part of living, then that means you are also personally committed to growth. You see that? Commitment to growth now enters the next thing now. Commitment to personal development. In fact, somebody said to earn more, you must learn more. The more you truly learn, the more your earning power increases. So, you, have you seen Aboki that is earning just 2,000 every day and is working tirelessly? You know why? It is not the labor. And yet, another person, a manager is inside the sea, just sleeping inside the sea, just sign one or two papers. It is not about the labor of the foolish that wear it every one of them. That one has, that man, go and check his library. Maybe he has invested like 6 million naira to buy books. And that Aboki has never bought a tract. You see that? When you invest in your knowledge, especially in the area that you know you are called to, you keep investing in that area. And once in a while to balance yourself so that you don't get carried away by ego and pride, you also read things that are not even related to your field at all. It humbles you, it helps you know that you don't know so much. You see that now? Improve daily. Final point. Take decisive actions to fix problems as much as possible. Take decisive actions to fix problems. Some problems, according to that some verse, one verse one, is relationships, wrong association. Don't, don't wait too long to say you still want to pray. You already know that it is wrong association. What do you do wrong, with wrong association? You cut it off. It's not prayer. You just cut it off. Some things don't need prayer. Some things just need practical action. You just cut it off. Simple. It's like a tap. is running loose. And then, rather than you to go off the table, Father, I'm praying, oh my God, what should I do? Sometimes, some, some, some major will just do that. Some major will say, please, can I slap this? Please, just my Abba. Go and get. Some of us need to just stand up and get some things done. So, resilience is for those who have stood, but the circumstances wants to make you discouraged. No, you get up, take decisive actions. If it is too big, if it looks like something too big to surmount, Chop it into little goals. Okay. Okay. Let, let's take again, you know. You want to release a track. You don't say, okay, I need 800,000 to release a track. Oh, God, where's 800,000? No. What do you need to do? What is the song I want to sing? You see that? Have I perfected it? Have I mastered it well? Who are the team I'm going to need? Who are the best I can get? So that after two years, I, I won't regret that. Well, why did I do this? Useless? Oh, Jesus. Why well, would I have not done this? You see that? Because most times I tell people, if I want to do something, give it your best at that level so that even your conscience, it's true that will keep improving. But at least your conscience, you'll be happy that I gave it my best back then. But now I'm better. Not, I didn't even give it my best at all. I did a shoddy work. You see that? I mean, you release a track and phone is ringing in the track and it's not part of the song. No, 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 Take decisive actions to fix the problem. So identify the problems, the circumstances that seem to face your vision. Okay, then what are the things to do? Then don't just say, do that right now and sleep. Assignment. Now begin to take those steps. Write down the action steps to take them. And say, okay, my next thing now, tonight I'm calling this person. Fixing an appointment with this person. Okay, I'm sending this to this person for review. Okay, I need feedback here. I've not gotten... Take that step. When you take the step, as you begin to receive the feedback, you begin to improve on what the people say. All right? Not that you receive feedback and say, all of them are my enemies. No. You receive the feedback. You are grateful for the feedback. And then you adjust where you need to adjust without losing. So people receive feedback and they compromise on their values. So they lose their voice. You see that? You receive feedback, but you know your values. You know where you are going. And then what do you do? You improve on yourself. There is always room for improvement. Listen, you can never be over-prepared, but you can be under-prepared. But listen, all you need to do is prepare to the level you know that you need to get started. And then start. Somebody say start. Somebody say start. Somebody say start. Somebody say it is possible. Say my dreams are possible. My vision is valid. In this season, I thrive. In this season, I fulfill my purpose. 
in this season, I fulfill my destiny. In this season, the will of God prospers in my life. In this season, I receive help. I call for resources. I call for the manpower. I call for the human resources. I call for the wisdom. I call for the direction. I receive the fortitude to pursue to the very end the purpose and the plan of God for my life. I will not be discouraged by failure. I will not be threatened by adversity. My circumstances will not keep me down. I rise by the power of God. I am anointed to do what I am called to do. Therefore, I am not afraid. I will see victory and I will bring many others into victory. My ministry, my calling, my ordination, we will see the light of day and will be a blessing to a generation. Gentiles come to my light and kings come to the brightness of my rising. The gates are open unto me and my gates are also open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Gentiles come to my light and kings come to the brightness of my rising. There is help for me in this season. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray with us. Father, we thank you for tonight. We give you praise for the systems of vision that you have revealed to us. We thank you for helping us to capture as many dimensions as it pertains to our positive vision. I pray for my brothers and my sisters tonight for grace for activation. Grace to take tangible steps. Those some have already taken and we're already receiving feedbacks. But I know that there are so many more who need to take steps and arise out of lethargy and slothfulness and mediocrity and begin to pursue your purpose for their life on another level. I ask, Lord God, release grace upon your children. Let us see tangible testimonies. Let your people have better results this season. Let them be 10 times better than they used to be. And we vow to return all the praise and the glory to you. In Jesus' much less name we pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. God bless you, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. We trust God to see. We have a final session tomorrow, just one hour, 20 minutes tomorrow, same time, 5 p.m. West African time. Please join us and all is well. Amen. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Glory to God. I